The Honourable David Cunliffe. I appreciate this opportunity to take a, a brief uh, call on the stuff that's at the heart of this Employment Standards Legislation Bill, and, and that's the stuff on zero hours contracts. I want to reflect on the changes that have been achieved, firstly what they are, why they are bad news and how this bill, as amended, seeks to make sure that they never darken the doors uh, of our employment relations again. Uh, Mr Chairman, it's well known, I think, by people out there that zero-hour contracts are iniquitous because they are unbalanced, that uh, the employer can require an employee to be available at any time, the employee has no guaranteed hours of work, uh, and that is a completely unsatisfactory state of affairs. It reduces the employee, sir, uh, to the stuff of an object, and that is not okay in this country. One little example in, in, uh, on the boundary of my electorate, Kilston Girls College, uh, who tell me that their absenteeism on this International Women's Day has gone through the roof because of casualisation of labour, meaning that parents can't plan their household stuff so that children are required to stay home to look after the elderly. Casualisation is bad enough. Zero-hour contracts uh, make that even worse by making it a completely unbalanced employment relationship. So I want to acknowledge Ian Lees Galloway and the Labor team that have worked uh, constructively with other parties on this bill. I think it's no secret uh, that the stuff that is at the heart of this is the fact that the government has moved because they had to, because minor parties came to our position, uh, which was very clear that the original draft of this bill did not deliver on the government's stated commitment to outlaw zero-hours contracts, and we won't actually know until the third reading, the end of the committee stage, uh, whether in fact the fine print measures up, but we'll be watching like a hawk. And in particular, there are three things, sir, that we're concerned about. Firstly, we want to remove the ability of employers to put people on contracts where they're on call with no permanent hours. Uh, being on call can be fine in some contexts, provide people are fairly remunerated and the stuff that goes with that. Secondly, employers should not be able to cancel shifts at the last minute. The idea that an employer can simply cancel a shift when they like should not be normalised in law. And thirdly, where practical hours of work should be included in the stuff of employment agreements so that people can plan their lives with some security. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, zero-hour contracts are an unmitigated disaster. Uh, this set of changes, which has been negotiated by my good colleague Ian Lees Galloway, uh, centres on section 67E, uh, the availability clause. The clause, when amended by SOP 155, will end zero-hour contracts. The amendment, sir, is absolutely vital because it changes the bill from being one that entrenches the ability to write zero-hour contracts to one that effectively outlaws them, and we hope for good. That means that an employer can no longer demand that the employee be available all the time without giving them guaranteed hours of work. And what's really important, and it will need to be tested in the courts, we recognise that, that there are provisions for reasonable compensation to be paid. So that's the reasonable stuff of compensation to be paid when somebody is required to work. Secondly, that the employer must have a good reason for requiring the employee to be available for work in the first place. And uh, that cannot be uh, to the point of changing shifts at the last moment without paying reasonable compensation. The notice period for changes or cancellation of shifts must also be a uh, reasonable and objective test in the courts and, crucially, must be included in the employment agreement. So it's now much clearer in the law that having agreed hours in employment agreement is an expectation which will be upheld by the courts. So there are other uh, clauses which contain vital stuff for this bill, uh, record, records relating to minimum entitlement uh, in clause 84, 4B, the employer's general obligation to keep records relating to minimum employment provisions, uh, the employer has an active obligation uh, to keep records and stuff which allow and require um, those records uh, to be uh, bona fide, to be uh, categorical, to be on the record. Uh, so that there's nowhere for the employer to hide. It reminds me of one time when I was uh, holding the immigration portfolio and we were looking at people rorting the system 
uh, with foreign fishing crews and uh, somebody's employment records were on a computer which just happened to jump overboard off the ship. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Chair. Chris Farfoy. Uh, 